Grushchik. I'm a senior software engineer in the Digital Home Group. Uh, thank you for coming. So today I'm going to talk about the PlayReady DRM Opti integration with the secure uh, video path. Actually, it's I think it's the third time um, I'm talking about the topic of uh, from from this area. So some of the information uh, probably I'm going to repeat and. Uh, Basically, I'm, I'm going to summarize uh, where we are today with, with Opti, PlayReady DRM, encrypted media extensions, uh, and so on. So uh, basically, my talk is going to cover multiple and, and technologies working together. So one of is that uh, is the W3C encrypted media extension uh, working draft. Basically, this is a W3C uh, standard, a work in progress, how to play back protected content inside of a browser. Uh, I will talk about the Microsoft Play Ready porting kit and uh, how that actually can work together with open source, if it can, uh, so how it can work with open source and uh, and how it can be integrated into a browser on top of Opti. And I will talk about a project called OpenCDM, uh, OpenCDMI, which is basically an interface between open source components on your box to, to a DRM subsystem and key system. And I will talk about our work on Chromium 45 as we're using in LHG as uh, or browser for for this implementation. So since we we met uh, in San Francisco, there there been a couple of new developments that that in our group uh, uh, we we managed to finish. So uh, basically, we 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 got to a point where we have a proof of concept, a work in progress uh, with a secure data path uh, on on Opti with PlayReady using the STMB2120 board. Uh, so uh, we have the secure memory allocator integration in a work in progress. Um, so a quite significant achievement for us that, that finally all work is getting ported over to the high keyboard. So, so far we mostly worked with uh, the STB2120 board, board, which we had only one single board in 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 uh, in Linaro that has security enabled, and with the high key, actually we can now distribute all work to to our partners. So, I, I on on last connect I had a talk about high key and the challenges we had for integrating Opti, Open Embedded, getting graphics working. So the good news, we, 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 we overcome these challenges, and now we have Wayland, Weston, Chromium, Opti, OpenCDM uh, ported over. So we, we also moved to a 4.5 kernel, uh, and using the OPT, OPT master branch, uh, so 4.5 and not 4.4 is because we needed some of the DRM KMS extensions from, from, from this kernel. Uh, and the news is that the AES OpenCDMI, uh, the content decryption module is now publicly available. So, so people who want to exercise encrypted media extensions using Opti, they can take this module and, and uh, play back clear key protected uh, stream. So, so in practice, that means that you have a file that, that, is, that is encrypted, you provide a, a, a clear a key in the open, and using an Opti trusted application, you decrypt the video and, 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 and it displays in the browser. Uh, we also finished the PlayReady trusted application. So uh, during our Previous connect, we demoed uh, the DRM system by just doing the particular dec decryption inside of the trusted application. Everything else was in the non-secure world. Uh, now we actually 
fully finished or work that, uh, that the DRM system is, is, is running inside of Opti. So these are the two boards which we support currently, the HiKey and the STMB2120. You, you are laughing. Yes, uh, that's, the, that's the best public picture I actually found of the B2120. <laughs> So, so let's repeat basically some, some, some of the information about encrypted media extensions and how content decryption is working. So let's say we, we have three basic components. One is the browser. We have a content decryption module that bridges the browser to, with, with, with some DRM system. So first step is that we open a web page and we get a new request. So at that point, the CDM sends a message to Opti that please load the, the DRM subsystem, initialize the trusted application uh, with some init data. And as a next step, we get back a request that, all right, I'm initialized, please provide me a new license. Uh, at that point, the browser goes to a server, it acquires a license, and sends back uh, some obfuscated code, which we don't know what it is, uh, to, the, to a DRM subsystem, which basically generates a key inside of the trusted environment. After this is successful, we get back a message that, all right, these are the keys available. Actually, you can start to queue buffers for decryption um, with these keys. So, all right, so as the next step, we, we need some buffers into which we would like to de decrypt or, 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 or buffers. This is the step where the secondary memory allocation framework comes in. So we need to allocate a secure buffer that is handed over to, to, to the trusted application. And as a next step, basically we send down an encrypted buffer, which is in a clear, so we use the uh, Opti shared memory to, to place this encrypted buffer, and uh, we just tell to, to the DRM subsystem, please decrypt. And in this case, basically, the secure buffer is referenced as a DMA buff, so we have a file descriptor, uh, the DMA buff with all the, all the extensions, and, 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 and we pass it towards to, to the decoder. Sorry? Yeah, so we, we, the DMA buff is, is, is you know, okay, underneath, it's, it's a contiguous memory. I, I, I will talk about more about how, how actually SMAF is, is allocating those buffers. So first, let's see what are the components we have in a picture, what is open source, what is not open source. Encrypted media extensions. So, so this is a standard for you know how to how to play back in browser some some protected content. It's a W3C. Are you going to discuss where I have a Android app instead of a, a <coughs> browser? Right. Uh, in case if you have an Android app, uh, the integration point uh, with, with your with your user space is not the open CDM, but the Android hardware abstra abstraction layer for for DRM. So so in case of, of in case of Linux, 
we, we actually have the OpenCDM project, which is an OpenCDM that, that links the DRM system to any application. And in case of the Android framework, you have the libdrm and the DRM provider that like Microsoft provides or Widevine provides you the integration to, to the Android framework. Microsoft provides the Android library? Yeah, it does. So with, with green, you, you actually see the open source components and you know the kind of yellow color uh, is, the, is the closed source components. So the open CDM is, is actually a separate project that is uh, using which you can use the DRM system by directly linking against it. So you can link the uh, static uh, library, static DRM libraries as uh, static libraries, or you can run it also as a separate system service and communicate to it using an RPC. On the kernel side, we have the SMAF, uh, Secure Memory Allocation Framework, the OPT kernel driver. So the SMAF is is a framework developed by Benjamin Kenyard. It's in a process of, of uh, upstreaming. Unfortunately, he's not present here today because of an illness. Uh, he's supposed to have, a, have a, another talk about SMAF. And on the TE side, we have various trusted applications communicating with each other or with the user space. So we have the SMAF trusted application. The SMAF trusted application is uh, responsible for, for uh, securing uh, memory allocations done by the SMAF framework. Uh, we have the PlayReady trusted application, uh, which is partially developed uh, uh, by Microsoft and some parts are, are for, so some parts of the specific are, is developed by us. We have a clear key trusted application that is uh, a small reference implementation for exercising Opti uh, uh, inside of a browser. We have the Opti OS. Uh, we're still missing the parts like a complete HDCP trusted application and the policy manager on the DE side. That's something we are currently looking into. So let's look into the memory allocations, how, 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 how secure, secure memory is allocated. So if, if we look the memory regions, and this is just a very simplified simplified uh, image. We have, you know, the RAM, the CME region, uh, shared memory that's shared between the TE and uh, the non-secure world, and we have the Opti secure RAM. So we have some security experts here. At any point of time, correct me if I'm wrong. There are some more experts on memory allocations than I am, in fact. Uh, on the kernel side, we have the SMAF framework, the secure memory allocation framework. Now, what it's important to know about the secure memory allocation framework that it's not a hard-coded way for allocating secure memory, but it's a, it's a framework for writing your own allocator, your own module, how to secure uh, allocated memory. So Benjamin created uh, uh, a reference CMA allocator, um, which basically allows us to reserve a memory region uh, inside of the CMA. So what, what you may notice here that when we do allocate, the actual memory allocated is not a secure memory. So at this point of time, you can do a map map of the, of the memory and it's readable, writable by the CPU. Now, in, in the next steps, we will see how this becomes a secure memory. So on the 
on the Opti side, we have a uh, trusted application, the SMAF trusted application, and whenever from the from the non-secure side, actually SMAF has uh, also a user space uh, interface. So using an IOCTOL call, you can send a request to SMAF that please make this memory uh, secure. So at this point of time, SMAF sends a request to the trusted application that please secure this piece of memory. And in the next step, the SMAF trusted application, if it approves this, this operation, speaks to the secure hardware and ensures that this piece of memory is uh, set to secure and uh, only accessible by, by Opti and trusted applications. Now, now we already have a, a, a reference implementation of this and there are some really nice features of this architecture like uh, for example, you can protect only some s small part of the memory and, and, and s expose some, some other information to the non-secure world, like you can have some header information uh, exposed uh, uh, through this ar architecture and you don't necessarily need to copy out everything from, from the secure world. Uh, also, you don't need to carve out all your secure memory at, at, uh, at uh, boot time. On the other hand, we also see some disadvantages of this. We actually don't have a complete implementation of, of, of this solution in Linaro because to make that particular piece secure, uh, you need to speak to the secure hardware to ensure that a given memory region is set to secure and that's these functions are usually very well protected by, by SOC vendors. So, so the APIs for us to make, to really set that piece of memory secure are not available to us. Um, so to target some of these some of these uh, some of this, uh, issues and and to make sure that uh, the SMAF can be used on any platform where we can bring up Opti. We, we are also looking currently into creating a carve-out uh, memory allocator that will basically use SMAF to do an allocation of, uh, of buffers directly on the already carved out uh, secure uh, memory. So the difference is here is that the allocator itself is already talking to the TA, to, to, to the trusted environment and the buffer is allocated on the secure RAM. So, so it, it is never exposed to the non-secure space um, and, and setting the mem memory to secure does in fact nothing because it's, it's already secure. Um, so this is one of the implementations we are currently looking into. Any questions at this point of time? Yeah. With the, with the uh, CMA allocator, I presume you can free the memory back and release it again. Exactly. Otherwise it'd become very fragmented. And it, it, it'll just uh, wipe the memory before release? Yes, that's, that's exactly how, how it should be working, that at the point of time when you release the memory, you send a request to the TE that please release this memory, and the TE basically zeroes the memory before freeing it up. So we can avoid, you know, exposing anything uh, to, to, to the non-secure world. Any other questions? All right, let's move on. So if, if you looked, you know, the full picture, how, how we get uh, from, from the encrypted buffers to, to the actual display and how, how DMA buff is used, uh, this is, you know, a high level uh, overview how, how, how we actually uh, implementing the secure data path. So 
suppose that we al allocate a secure buffer for the decrypted frames. Uh, we use the Play Ready Trusted application to to decrypt the uh, content into that the actual uh, uh, DMA buff handlers are passed towards to the decoder hardware, which uh, decodes into an another secure buffer, so we can ensure that at no point of time any of the sensitive data uh, leaves the TE environment, and we, we push out the frames to the, to the HDMI display. Uh, we are also looking into implementing a security policy manager, basically uh, checking the status if anything, you know, uh, changed that would affect the secure data path and, and we would need to destroy the session or, or modify the parameters. So if we look into our, our play ready implementation, uh, basically on, on high level we have the Chromium browser, we have the OpenCDM project which is open source. The OpenCDM project uh, provides a CDMI interface um, and uh, luckily Microsoft also supports the same CDMI. So that means that uh, that when we build the open CDM, it is just compatible with the libraries that are which are coming from 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 Microsoft, uh, and to ensure that the user space of the Play Ready DRM can communicate uh, and and uh, with uh, with the secure application, we we implemented a, a Linaro Pre-T, which is. Pretty stands for the play ready interface for, for trusted execution environment. So this is a small interface layer that you need to implement to, to communicate uh, with uh, the play ready TA. Around the Microsoft play ready TA, we made a small wrapper that actually uh, translates some of the play ready trusted application uh, calls to a global platform, compatible calls, uh, things like memory allocation and, and, and you know, basic, uh, basic uh, functions that, uh, that the DRM may need. All right, so actually it, 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 it takes a, quite a long time for us to, to get to a point where, where uh, where we can run, you know, a commercial DRM uh, using Opti and using Chromium. And we found out that, you know, many companies may be not play-ready licensees or they may have different use cases. So for that purpose, we actually, we, we created multiple CDMs. Uh, so we have a so-called mock DRM, which is actually not doing any decryption it is just for playing back uh, non-encrypted data. We have a clear key OpenSSL based uh, CDM. Uh, in this case, Chromium is using a CDM that is decrypting uh, uh, video content using OpenSSL. We have a clear key, uh, clear key and Opti based CDM. In this case, the keys are, are in clear. Um, but the decryption is fully done inside of Opti and we have a play ready uh, CDMI implementation. And this table basically summarizes where we are with the various, uh, various implementations on, on various platforms and, and how things are looking on compatibility wise. So, we really like to work with the external clear key and SSL based CDMs uh, because that actually works directly on your PC so you can, you can test, uh, test uh, Chromium uh, very quickly and efficiently. Um, and obviously we have the clear key CDM, the uh, linear CDM with a T that uses the Opti as decryption 
we have the linear obsidian with the software play ready. So in that case, play ready is used only oh, it, it used as a non secure uh, library, and we have the fully secure uh, CDM with with play ready. So we, we really like to work with the Dragon board, but one of the problems we had with the Dragon that there is no Opti support, so, so we could not make uh, simply work some of, some of these modules.